Hallelujah. Somebody messed with my air conditioner here. Whew. Glory. Hallelujah. Welcome to the house of death. <laughs> It's a good day to die. Boy, you say that around the secular world, they run. <laughs> Boy, you different to get, you know, in the secular world, it's pretty amazing. Somebody says, hey, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. And they're like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> they have no idea. No idea. Praise God. You know, one of the things that Jesus brought us was the anointing. The anointing is carried by the Holy Spirit as the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. The anointing. The word says that the anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. It's like if you were in prison and somebody brought you a hacksaw, it was a tool to break out. Somebody get it? But if people don't know how to use the tool, you know what happens? They stay in prison. See, Jesus gives us the tools to break out. Everyone say break out. But people don't use them. They're still calling on his name for break out. And he says, I already gave you the tools. Saw your way out. Amen. Or sow your way out. Amen. Amen. There's a place where you and I get to where we're breaking free. And there's a place where you maintain where you're breaking free. Breaking free is a constant. It's not a one-time event. Amen? It's constant. Most of the time, people who think they're free are usually bound. Amen. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? It's not until... Because if, what happens is people think that they're free and they're okay and they stop. That means they become bound again. Because there is a process of staying free. There's an area where you and I want to be free. And there's a place of freedom. Would you turn to the book of Exodus, please? Exodus chapter 12. Exodus is a representation of exit. Breaking free. Exodus chapter 12. Now the Israelites were in bondage to the Egyptians. They were slaves to them. They labored under slavery and torment. And one of the reasons why they went into bondage and slavery is because they were disobedient. They began to worship and serve other gods. And God allowed Egypt to bring them in bondage. At one time, they were free. God used Joseph to become one of the major assistant leaders in Egypt. Because he was able to interpret a dream. It brought him out of bondage. Joseph was in prison. And brought him right out. Because he was standing right with God. Consistently righteous. And in that. God used Joseph. To bring prosperity. Not only to Egypt during the famine. But to be able to be prepared. To feed the Israelites, God's kingdom. Does everybody understand? During the famine. And so now because of their disobedience and Pharaoh, and uh, the Pharaoh had perished then and, and, uh, and another one took over and he became more wicked. Instead of the Israelites departing, they stayed. And they stayed there and were in slavery for over 400 years. I believe it was almost 430 years. And God visited a man called Moses. 
who came out of Egypt himself. And he saw a burning bush and God spoke to him. And he explained to him, I've heard the cries of my people. It's time. Their fulfillment has come. And I'm going to put them in a place where they are breaking free. And when God did this, it's powerful because it's a whole arena of how God establishes freedom and breaking free. And we need to be broke free from not only ourselves, but from debt, from fear, from all things. Because the world is constantly bringing bondage to each and every one in some way or another or trying to bring it on us. We are constantly hard-pressed all around. In Exodus 12 and 21, it says that Moses called for the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourself according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. This was representation of Jesus. Jesus would be considered the Passover lamb at this time. And you shall take a, bu a bush of hyssop, dip it in, blood, in the blood that is on the basin and strike the lentils of, of the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lentil of the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come in to your houses and to strike you. That's why it's important to apply the blood of Jesus on your homes, your vehicles, on yourself. Because now it is the ministry of the Spirit. No longer do you have to go out and kill a lamb, thank God, because the lamb of God provided the blood. But he provided the blood spiritually so that when you speak the blood, it is activated. Does everybody understand? That's why if you go anywhere, you apply the blood of Jesus. Every time I'm in my vehicle, the first thing I say, the blood of Jesus. I, can't, I, I can tell you testimony after testimony that the blood of Christ has protected me from multiple, multiple things and accidents. And so he told them, apply the blood of Jesus on this and because I'm sending the final plague that's going to set you free. And so they obeyed. Amen? And again, he says in verse 24, and you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. In other words, this would be passed down the line all the way to me and you now. That the blood of Christ. See, the father acknowledges the blood. He acknowledges the blood of his son. What greater thing can you have? Demons hate the blood of Christ, but they love the blood of humans. And verse 25, And it will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads in worship. Now remember something that the word Egypt means house of bondage. So because it means house of bondage, and, and another thing you got to understand that the world was ruled by Egypt. So it was in bondage. Now the Egyptians were considered Nephilim, bloodline. They were called themselves gods and goddesses. That's why they were known as pharaohs. Does everybody understand? So they proclaimed themselves as gods. They were from the Nephilim bloodline. Does everybody understand that? And we're still dealing with that today, the Nephilim bloodline. And he said to them, he said to the children, then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did, in verse 29. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who, captive who was in the dungeon and to all the firstborn of the livestock. 
So Pharaoh rose in the night, he and all of his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. It took a lot of judgment for Pharaoh to surrender. That's why you're seeing a lot of judgment now. Also take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. Now this is wild. Here you got Pharaoh saying, look at, take everything, go. Go on out, take it all, I'm done. I can't handle this any longer. But you know what? Bless me on your way out. <laughs> bless me. Why? He realized that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and Moses was much greater than the gods that they served and the gods that they thought they were. So he said, go, take it all. Then he called for Moses, Aaron, and verse 32. <clears throat> also take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, we shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, which was the word of the Lord. And they had asked from the Egyptians articles of what? Silver, articles of gold and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they would they were granted them what they requested. Thus, they plundered the Egyptians. So what did they leave with? They left with the cattle, the herbs, the gold, and the silver. How many of y'all know that's getting ready to happen? That's why the shaking is happening now. There's going to be a shift coming. Then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakoth, about 600,000 men on foot besides children. A mixed multitude went up with them also in flocks and herds, a great deal of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes of dough which they had brought out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared provisions for themselves. Now the journey of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, on that very same day, it came to pass that all the armies, everyone say armies, of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. In other words, God called the Israelites his armies, the men, women, and children. Now I want you to look at something from, because they were slaves to the world of bondage known as Egypt. You and I were slaves to the world of bondage. The breaking free is only in Christ through the blood of Christ. Many were disappointed, discouraged, angry because of the lack of trust and understanding. Because they knew that there, Moses was telling them it was coming but there was always a shift. Something changed. God released another plague. Every time Moses went into Pharaoh, he thought it was over with and they were going to come out. But God shifted. And the children of Israel kept grumbling and complaining because they weren't willing to flow with the shift of God. And it delayed things. The Egyptian was associated again with the Nephilim of the gods and goddesses of the world, just like today. Hmm. The Passover lamb is Christ. His blood of repentance is the first step to breaking free. That is the first step of breaking free. What? Repentance and being cleansed by the blood. Again, most people don't even think that they're free and their life is good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And they have no idea they're in bondage, still living in the matrix. Amen. 
The second step is following the Lord or following the word of God and his voice. Because if they weren't willing to obey the voice of Moses, they wouldn't have come out. They would have stayed there, which was the voice of God. So again, the first step is repentance and through the blood of Christ. The second step of breaking free is following the word and the voice of God. God brought judgment to Egypt and released his army as he is doing now. Does everybody get it? See, there is an army rising up. Stronger, becoming more united, becoming more anointed. God is using Trump as a Moses right now. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because God is using what he is doing to expose, remove, changing things and shifting things. Trump doesn't even know what he's doing. Does everybody get it? He just knows he's got to fulfill this mission. It was put in his spirit. It was put in his heart. And he's learning more and more things that are being brought to him. He's becoming more and more righteous. And he doesn't even understand it. But during this righteous, because God is changing him as he's in office now, more and more and more. He didn't enter this way, believe me. He just knew he had to become president because he, he saw so much corruption and so much lying and so much deceit. And as a businessman, he kept watching his country be burned and ripped off by politicians and by foreign governments. And he learned how, even from his father, passed down to be a wise businessman. And he wanted to change the United States back because he loved this country that gave him an opportunity to become wealthy himself. Believe me, he was not a Christian according to what we call Christianity. He was a heathen. And God turned a heart just like he turned our hearts. Amen? But now God is using him. The same thing as you're seeing in the Exodus is happening right now. And the same fight over the Nephilim and fallen angel offsprings is still that same fight now. Amen? The Nephilim race is still active and alive. Only in modern day time. Holding and ruling the financial industry. The elite structures. The lavish living. Until then, the world was <laughs> held by judgment now. God is bringing judgment. Just like then, when he brought judgment to Egypt and to Pharaoh, known as the elite, the Nephilim bloodlines, he's doing that right now. In fact, many of them have even been arrested it's happening. We're in it. Why? Because God is having us to be, come to a place of breaking free. Breaking free from ourselves. Breaking free from debt. Breaking free from fear. Breaking free from sickness. Breaking. Listen, when everyone left Egypt, they were healed. No one left there sick. They all were healthy. They left. They, God was healing them as they were leaving. And they left with the wealth. They left with the gold and the silver. The Lord said the gold and silver is mine. In fact, you, if you recall, some of these kings thought it was their own. And God brought judgment on them when they would take it from the sanctuaries. Is everybody okay? Again, Trump is a type of Moses changing the course of America. The land of the free. It's called the land of the free. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is Freedom. America, the land of the free, to do its purpose, God's purpose, for God of the eternity, not the God of self and evil. People had to be willing to make a <laughs> sudden shift, turn, which means turn or change of direction in obeying another nature, which they were not accustomed to. The Egyptians weren't. People are not accustomed now to what's happening. 
There's a great fight what's going on. The world is, uh, listen, the world is uniting in one area, coming against the globalists, the elite, the Nephilim race. They're uniting and they've been realizing many people are waking up and many people who were in this elite are coming out of it. Many of their children don't want to live this way. They're coming out of it and they're exposing many things that's going on right now, globally. People have no idea how much bondage they were in until they are broke, break free from it. <laughs> Again, they had to be willing to make a sudden shift. And in this new nature that people are following, it's called a divine nature. It's the nature of Christ now. And God is using his divine nature in individuals so that they could follow not the person, but the divine nature of Christ. Does everybody understand? just like God used Moses. <clears throat> Divine nature allowing the breaking free through obedience and release of prosperity and wealth and blessings. <laughs> to what? To expand the kingdom. That's the purpose. That is the purpose. Right now, the United States has judgments. There's multiple, multiple disasters. I don't know if you know right now, but 31,000 acres are already burnt in California. That's a lot of land. So we got burnings in the west. We got floods in the central and all. I mean, look what's going on all over. But it's amazing during all of these disasters. Now think about this. During all of these disasters that's going on, it's billions and billions of dollars. But still, the stock market is up. The economy is increasing. All during these disasters. <laughs> because it's not affecting God's will. Why? To get us into a place where we are breaking free. He wants this country to be breaking free from all the things that are going on, from all the demonic forces, from the elite, from the Nephilim race. He wants this country to be broke free. Why? So we can expand to the world like we're supposed to financially and rescue as many souls before time's up. Amen? Amen? Amazing things that are happening right now. Amazing. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. So we must be willing to make that shift a direction so that we can maintain a place of breaking free and maintain that freedom. We were slaves to the world and the rulers of this world. God is breaking us free in every area. In Ephesians 2 in chapter 1, let's speak it. He says, in you he made what? Alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air. That's a demonic force, spirit, principality. Does everybody get it? The spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the other. So you and I were born in blinders. We were born into this world in sin. And until you're born again, you will come under the wrath of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God, who is so rich in mercy because of his great love with which, which he loved us, even when we were 
dead in trespasses. He made us alive together with Christ. For grace, you've been saved. In other words, the plan of escape was granted to me and you. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, by the plan of God, you have escaped. You've been saved. You've escaped through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That we should do what? Walk in them. For you and I were slaves to sin. The presence of evil. The ruler of this world under the bondage of deception and lies. Lacking understanding. Misled by false religions and false doctrines, false teachings. But Christ made us alive in him eternally. <laughs> we were once dead, but now we have life. But while we were dead, we were feeding death <laughs> that dwelled in us. But Christ's plan of escape, breaking us free from slaves of deception and sinfulness, bringing us to a race of Divine nature. No longer a race of greed and lust, murder and rape, perversion and death. Well, there's false doctrines and false movies and all kinds of influence that constantly feed death, which is feeding the old man. Political banking. This is the rulers, the ruling classes of the Nephilim race. Ruling the financial, ruling movies, music, education, political banking, governmental systems, creating wars and causing bloodshed. That's what they do. And delight in other people's sufferings. Why? Because it is the highest form of wickedness. And they can send money to help people, but still... They may help certain people, but yet murder multiples of people. Does everybody understand? That's how they operate. They create chaos. And when they create chaos, they create their, they change, it helps them have an opportunity to change rules and regulations or bring people back into bondage. In other words, they create debt, then lend you the money. That's what they've been doing to the United States. That's what they're doing to nations globally. And then they put people back into slavery under Egypt. In Romans 6. In case you don't know the name of the title. Tonight's teaching. It's called Breaking Free. Romans chapter 6. Again, many people don't even know that they're still in bondage. You know, most people are thinking, I just want to get on with my life. You know they're in bondage. <laughs> because those who are truly free are not interested in getting on with their life. They're interested in getting on with his life. 6.15, is everybody there? Romans 6.15. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the what? Heart. You obeyed from the heart. You were sincere. You wanted a change. You wanted a new life. You realized that the life you were living was a deceptive life. That form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human 
terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so then present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness. Holiness. And when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you then, in, uh, then have in the things of which you have now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to what? Holiness and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is escape, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Most didn't know, again, that they were slaves to the world until they were set free. Many so-called Christians are still slaves and haven't broke free because of the unwilling surrender, trust, and submission to the obedience of the way of escape, which is called God's grace. That's his plan. And Galatians chapter 5. Breaking free. Many fall into religions and become more of a bondage. So they may not be doing the same things they used to do, but they're not still doing what God wants them to do. Not being free. Remember, the anointing breaks every yoke of bondage, doesn't it? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty carried by the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the what? Liberty or freedom by which Christ has made us free. Christ. The word Christ means anointed one and his anointing. And do not be entangled again with the what? Yoke of bondage. Galatians 5 verse 2. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you are circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. Works of the flesh, works of self, works of religiosity. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace, from the plan of escape. For we through the Spirit, through the what? Spirit. Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have, become, have been called to what? Liberty or freedom. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite... And devour one another, beware, lest you become consumed by one another. Again, many fall back into self-awareness instead of Christ-awareness. I'm going to say that again. Many fall back into self-awareness instead of Christ-awareness. That's where Jesus get, told us to deny yourself. So they, when you fall into self, more self-awareness, you fall into what we call a survival mode instead of a surrender mode. So you become a survivalist instead of one who surrenders and trusts. Oh, hallelujah. Again, many fall back into self-awareness instead of Christ-awareness where there's a form of good, but it's not righteous. There's healthy, but not holy. <laughs> There's wealthy, but not worthy. Second Peter chapter 2. 
I want to say that again because I think we need to hear that. Many fall back into self-awareness instead of Christ-awareness where there is good breaking free. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's try this again. Thank God he's a God of second chances. Okay, I'm going to do this right. There we go. But there were also what? False prophets among the people. Even as there was, will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift what? Destruction. That's happening now. How many, I want to say congregations or organizations, whatever, have now approved same-sex marriage? Homosexual priests, homosexual pastors, homose does everybody understand? Approving all of this. Why? Because false doctrine has gotten in. I know many, I know many places, I know many pastors that were involved in certain denominations that have now pulled out because the denomination is approving these things and they're separating themselves from them. Wise choice. And it says, and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetous they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time their judgment is not, has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. Verse 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved Moses, one of eight people, Noah, I'm sorry, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by filthy conduct of the wicked. For the right, that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds, Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous and self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Go to verse 18. It says, when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. In other words, those who have escaped are going back into slavery again. Well, they promise them freedom. Why? They promise them entitlements. They themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to even have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit. And so, having, having washed to her wallowing in the mire. Evil speaks in forms of goodness. <laughs> through media, through news, through radio, through TV, through music, through newspapers, computers, schools. Politicians, marketing, magazines, books, technology. Bringing in false and lies, deception, deceit, and corruption. 
It brings people back into addiction and worldliness, lust, and slavery of deception. Especially under the propaganda that is being released. There's much of it. That's why they've been exposed. Have you heard the saying, uh, false news? I mean, it's been a new, new word since Trump got in office. False news. He's been calling them out as liars. Why? Because the media lies. It's not just the media, but it's all over. Why? Because, listen, when the enemy is cornered, he does everything he can to lie his way out. This is what's happening now. Why? Because judgment, exposure, all kinds of things are happening. So they, they begin to make up lies. They begin to make up crimes to mislead people. And again, these people think that they're free. But they're really under bondage themselves and slaves to deception. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1, breaking free, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. James chapter 1 and verse 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to do what? Save your soul. See, most people don't even realize that this word is true. It was recorded by living witnesses of the works of Christ and then the acts of Christ and the acts of the apostles and everything else that you and I can be guided and that the book continues. It never stops. Even though it's ended here, you and I are still in the book. It continues. It's called the book of life. Book of remembrance. There's a big book up there somewhere, man. And we're all in it. So he says, in verse 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Did you ever get around somebody who can quote scripture but can't live it? <laughs> There's many of them. Why? They think they're free, but they're actually what? In bondage. Yeah. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. Real simple. He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty or freedom and continues in it, and is not a forgetful here, but as a doer of the word or work, this one will be blessed in what he does. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Amen. So in this area, I want you to grab hold of something. Blessed is more than provision. It's above it. God provides what we need, but when you're blessed, it's above just provision. It's above it. Amen? So this third, third area that we need to do is we need to be workers. We need to work. We need to practice it. Put it in our lives. Work the Word. That's what the Bible says. Work out your own salvation. Work the Word. Live the Word. Walk the Word. Amen? Why? And while you're doing that, you will produce righteousness. You'll be a blessed above measure. <laughs> well, it, it has some comes with a heart change, doesn't it? Well, if there's no heart change, there ain't nothing going to happen. You got to be willing to do a heart change and a holy shift. There's got to be a holy shift in this. Second Corinthians three. We used to be temporary players. Now we're eternal players. You know, I was in the world and in the drug world and so forth. People would be known as a player. Are you a player? Yeah, I'm cool. That was the lingo. 
You a player? Yeah, the neighbor. Of course, there was other sayings too then. But, but now we're eternal players. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Nevertheless, when one does what? Turn. Turns to the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord. Yeah. Turns to the Lord. Hmm. When he turns to the Lord. So not only do we need to be a worker of the word, but we need to turn to the Lord. By turning to the Lord, you're already setting the Lord before you. So people have a tendency to think that turning to the Lord, well, you're turning to the Lord, but you're setting him before you in everything you do. Maintain the turn to the Lord, setting him before you in all of your doings. So when one turns to the Lord, when, the, when someone sets the Lord before them, <laughs> the veil is taken away. Why are they able to see better? Now where the Lord is, because the Lord is a spirit, there is what? Freedom or what? Liberty. Why? Because, listen, if Jesus is walking, you're walking with Jesus, you're walking in freedom. Because his presence, you think any demons are going to come after him? I mean, even the head honcho tried to deceive him and they couldn't. So you got to, this is where you begin to, the reality of your identity of who you are. When you're walking with Jesus. Walking with Jesus. He is before you. You're always setting him before you. But you're walking with him hand to hand. Heart to heart. Cheek to cheek. And if you're walking with him in that arena, there's constant communion. There's constant fellowship. There's constant acknowledgement. There's communication. What do you think? You're not alone. People may think you're weird. It's okay. They're in bondage and you're free. <laughs> They'll think you're talking to someone. Look at that person over there. He's talking to someone. I used to do it all the time. Still do. And we'll be talking in the car. People looking at What's that dude talking to? He must have one of those head things. <laughs> Ephesians 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> and verse 8. <laughs> Is everybody there? Amen. Praise God. Let's speak it. For you were once what? Darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and having no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose, expose, and expose. That's the fifth thing that we should constantly do to what? Break. That's the process of breaking free. Have no fellowship, but expose it. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with this wine in it, which is dissipation, but be filled with the what? Be filled with the what? Spirit. Staying filled with the Spirit is the sixth thing. It is vitally important. Staying filled with the Spirit. And Colossians, I'm going to close here, chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1.
in verse 9. So the first part of breaking free is repentance through the blood. Amen. The second is following the word and the voice of God. And what's the third? Third one? Work the word. Thank you. There it is. Work the word. And the fourth one is to maintain the turn putting the Lord before you. The fifth one is exposure, exposing the wickedness. The sixth one is staying filled with the Spirit. And the seventh one is coming. Verse 9. Is everybody there? For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all what? Wisdom and spiritual understanding. So the seventh is to increase with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood and forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things. In, in Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Powerful. And the eighth thing, which eight means new beginnings, something important. It's the eighth step. Be careful of associations. Maintain those who are like-minded with you. Has everybody got it? Maintain those who are like-minded with you. Those that are not like-minded with you will turn on you. They could be anyone. They could be family. They could be friends. They could be whatever. Because eventually the irritation in them because of what's going on in you, the righteousness in you, is going to irritate them. They must eventually outbirth a wrath. Something will always occur. Amen? Why? Because they're still in bondage, aren't they? Even though they think they're free, they're not. Even though they still want to live for their lives, they're still slaves to deception of this world. But there is a breaking fee that God is bringing to each and every one of us. There is going to be a transfer. There's a shift that's coming. And we must be ready, no matter what. Ready. Stand, stand fast. Continue. Continue to battle, continue to pray, continue to worship, to continue to get in God's presence, and continue to feed your spirit with the Word of God, because man can't live by bread alone, but the Word of God. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. Thank you for breaking us free, and in the process of breaking us free. Let the Word that's been imparted in us tonight be protected by the blood of Christ, and let it expand, Lord. Let it expand, not only through our lives as examples of freedom, but let it expand through the body of Christ that we may become unified in truth, spirit, and in power, and that the world may see, especially in these last days where the rescue is going to increase tremendously, but so will judgment. So, Lord, we welcome. We welcome your judgment. And we welcome your rescue. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.